so lovely to be here. Thank you. And it's an honor and privilege to share this summit with these incredible speakers. Um, I'm learning so much from my fellow students. So um, I also wanted to congratulate everybody who's here today because it tells me that you actually are personally invested in your development and your learning. So well done you. Give yourself a pat on the back and say, I'm smart. So I also know that you'll hear things from me today that perhaps you've heard before, you've read the books, done the talks. And my hope today is that something in my message is going to ring for you at this particular time of your life. Because sometimes we need to hear something more than once, right? Um, so I'll tell you what I also know. There are a lot of people going through life feeling trapped and frustrated, living lives that they don't like. I know I've got that t-shirt and right now I'm rethinking myself and I'm helping others. So I'm hoping that in my story now you will learn some things and at the same time you'll realize why I sometimes avoided my own purpose even though I originally knew it. So let me tell you my story. My family and my home life in South Africa were my rock and my foundation. So if you were wondering about the accent, there you have it. Um, they were my rock and foundation until I was 18 when it all fell apart. My parents' divorce left me adrift. And I immediately found myself worth an identity in my work. I've always had great jobs and great career. And at the same time, my personal life was a mess. Bad choices and bad behavior as I spiraled deeper and deeper into depression and a sense of hopelessness until I tried once and then again a second time to take my own life. That second time when I woke up in the hospital at age 26 and I realized I was still here, I said out loud, there must be a better way to live. And that day God put a vision in my heart and a passion when he reminded me that it wasn't my life to take. Now, before you think, oh, wow, that's when I started. Oh, no. As soon as I was better and healed, I went right back to my familiar. Isn't that what we always do? We kind of revert back to the ruts and my known, my familiar was hard work and play hard and work hard. I uh, changed jobs a few times. I got some great um, increases in jobs. I made a bonus. I bought my first house. I became an unmarried mom to my amazing daughter. And somewhere along there, I got married and then we emigrated. So I kept my life very full and very busy doing everything but what God had called me to do. So my question to you right now is, what has God placed on your heart that you are perhaps avoiding and, and not stepping into? What happens to us when we give up our passion and our purpose? What will not be changed in the world because you didn't choose to live your purpose? And I'm reminded of an inflatable beach ball, you know, the kind that the kids play with in the pool. Think of that ball as your dream and your vision. And as you hold it up, you think, this is my dream. This is my passion. This is what I want to do. And then life comes along and it smacks it out of your hands and said, oh, stop dreaming. Go get a real job. Give up already. And so we push that ball underwater and we try to suppress it. But here's the thing. An inflatable ball doesn't stay under the water. It just keeps pushing back up. Does this resonate for you right now? Have I maybe stirred something in you? If you feel that you're trying to keep your ball underwater, tell us about it in the comments. I want to hear from you. So, but because here's what happens is that the longer we spend trying to keep that ball underwater, the more exhausting it gets. And the challenge is that the ball becomes worn and it starts to leak air. And as it gradually deflates, like this ball, as it gradually deflates, we gradually squeeze ourselves into a smaller and smaller image of ourselves. Because with that deflation leaks our passion, our excitement, everything that we believed about ourselves leaks out with that air. And then what happens is that what I call your default operating system kicks in. And you know what our default operating system is? Fear and doubt, anxiety, and just pressure, just avoidance. So if you're feeling trapped in life, I challenge you today, don't let your ball deflate. Don't settle in that default operating system. You know, um, years ago, I bought a townhouse and there were a few things about the townhouse that I didn't like. And 
I got some great advice from a friend of mine at work where he said, whatever it is you don't like about the townhouse, make sure you change it soon. Because if you don't, you'll become blind to it. And I thought, wow, what a powerful metaphor for life. Where are you settling for second best? Where have you become blind to your true desires out of avoidance or fear? Because then what happens is that we get stuck in a victim mindset and we start blaming others. We start blaming external circumstances for the fact that we don't have any joy or progress in our lives. And when you blame and complain, it just continues to deflate your ball until you have no energy left. But trust me, there is a way to get out of this. So going back to my story, you know, it took, it was 10 years after my suicide attempt before I sat down and wrote a business plan. And by then we were living in Santa Monica and there's nothing like being an unemployed immigrant and having all my distractions taken away for me to suddenly find my courage because we make excuses when we get stuck in that victim mindset, we make excuses. And I'm going to come back to that in a moment. But when I started my business, my first business was actually called DDP consulting for divine design and purpose. And all, ever since then, I have helped individuals and leaders and organizations uh, rethink themselves, saying, we think you because your thinking is at the foundation of everything you do. So as I did, went through a process of rethinking myself, I followed a process of three R's. So I'm going to give these to you. And as I give them to you, type the words in the comment box so some people who are missing it or multitasking can catch up. So the first R is regroup. Regroup. And this starts with asking, who am I? Who are you? Because here's the thing. You are 100% responsible for your life. So wherever you want to go and whatever you want to do, you are there. You're the common denominator. So rethink you starts with figuring out who am I? How do I rethink myself? Because we've lived with that false identity for so long and those stories that we make up about ourselves that it's time to get back to who we really are. The second part of regroup is where are you? Figuring out where you are is also critical. Any of you who's ever used a GPS system will know you can put in an address and it'll show it to you on the map. But if you want turn by turn directions, you need to tell Siri where you are now. So while your car may have a satellite system to tell you where you are, you don't. So the second part of regroup is so important because when you figured out who you are and where you are, you're ready for the second R, which is reframe. This is about reframing those narratives, reframing your dialogue, reframing your expectations and your mindset. I have a technical word for this. It's called dumping the baggage because you can't take those old narratives into your new life with you. And I would encourage you to, you need help with this. Don't try and do it alone. As my coach says, you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. And only once you've reframed, and I can help you with that. I love to give people clarity and hope. So make sure you reach out to me um, so we can have a conversation. But once you've remapped your world and you've got your, your mind right size, now you can do the third R, which is refocus. This is about refocusing your habits, your lifestyles, your relationships, and it's developing what I call life mastery. So if you've been avoiding things for a while, it's time to reclaim your power. You have the power to change your thinking and to rethink you because the world is waiting for your voice. So let's talk. I give free consultations on my website. You can find me there anytime at rethinkyou.com. And I'd like to close with this quote from the amazing book called Crossing the Unknown Sea by David White, W-H-Y-T-E. Life is a creative, intimate and unpredictable conversation if it is nothing else, spoken or unspoken. And our life and our work are the, are the result of the particular way we hold that passionate conversation. So I challenge you today, start a new conversation and let that first conversation be with me. Kim Levings with Rethink You. Thank you for listening.